Hey guys, and welcome to Nintenduary, a month where we review a different Nintendo 64 game every day for the entire month. A few days ago, we took a look at Banjo-Kazooie, and today we are looking at Rare's second 3D platformer on the N64, Donkey Kong 64. Let's get into it. I'll be honest. I had to fight Luke on this one to let me voice this review because I had a very, very strong opinion on Donkey Kong 64. And hear me out on this, I love and loved this game so much as a kid, but I also fully understand all of its faults and criticisms. When I was a kid, my brother and I would often go down the street to our friend's house who also had a Nintendo 64. And when they put Donkey Kong 64 in, I was so excited to see the unique cast of characters who were all playable that I had never seen before. And mind you, I played this game before I actually played Banjo-Kazooie or Super Mario 64, so this was actually my introduction into the 3D platformer genre. After we got home from our friend's house, we begged our mom to take us to Blockbuster so we could rent the game. But since we didn't have that darn N64 expansion pack, my brother and I actually decided to give my grandma in Florida a call, who speaks mostly Spanish, and explained what game we needed and how it was in a special yellow cart. Well, my grandma, bless her heart, sent over Pokemon Yellow Edition instead for the Game Boy by accident, not realizing the difference, which mind you ended up being my very first Pokemon game. But we called my grandma back and told her she got the wrong game, and bless her heart, she went back to the store and mailed us Donkey Kong 64. So finally, after weeks of waiting for a game, and to a six year old that's a very long time, the game finally came in the mail and I put hours and hours and hours into this game. And right away, this game lets you have three profiles, so it was fine. I had my profile, my brother had a profile, and when my older brother would come over, he also had his own profile, and, and the game was full of things to do. King K. Rule is back and plans to destroy Donkey Kong Island, which is an island that has a mountain shaped like Donkey Kong's head. As a kid, I always thought it looked more like a fat bird, but that's besides the point. K. Rule has a doomsday device that will explode the island, but it broke down, so once they fix it, that island is toast. On top of it, King K. Rool's minions managed to capture all of Donkey Kong's family, and it's up to Donkey Kong himself to save his family. Now, here's where some of the criticisms come from. Remember how Banjo-Kazooie had jiggies that players had to collect that unlocked new worlds and it worked really well? Or even how Mario had stars? This game takes that concept of collectibles and kind of puts it on crack. DK meets this giant crocodile thing that wants to help DK, but it's held captive by K. Rule. So it's up to DK to go and find golden keys to unlock the cage. Once all the keys are collected, DK can go on and defeat K. Rule. But before DK can get into the level where he can collect the keys, he has to collect golden bananas. And because you need a certain amount of golden bananas to get into each level to get the key. It's pretty easy at first, but it gets really hard to unlock new worlds later on. But once DK is in the world, he must collect regular bananas and feed them to these pigs who open up the boss fight. But there are also coins DK has to collect to buy power-ups from Cranky or weapons from Funky Kong. But make sure you collect ammo for the gun or else it won't work. And you need these power-ups to get more golden bananas, which you need to get to more levels. Oh, and there's these blueprint pieces that you need to collect to take to a guy who will give you more golden bananas. Oh, and I also forgot all about these instruments you have to buy with coins from Candy Kong. Oh, and there's this fairy who wants you to take pictures of her lost fairies, but you need to collect film before you can take the pictures. But remember how I said there were five unique characters? Yeah. Once you rescue each character, they have to go and collect their own bananas, golden bananas, and coins. They all individually have to go buy their guns, power-ups, and instruments, and have to individually feed the pigs their own bananas. See, if I'm playing as Diddy Kong and see a golden banana for Lanky Kong, I can't go over there and just get it. I have to walk back over to the character barrel, switch to Lanky Kong, and walk all the way back just to pick up the golden banana. If I see a trail of regular bananas that are purple, and I'm playing as Chunky Kong, I can't pick them up. I have to switch to Tiny Kong and walk all the way back to collect those bananas from the trail. 
It really means that players have to backtrack almost everything five times, but not in the way that like Sonic Adventure does it where you play the whole game five different times. Instead, you have to backtrack five times before you can move on to the next world. Of course, after a while though, you kind of get a hang of it and you make a mental map as you play. Okay, now that the criticisms are out of the way, the pros of this game actually heavily outweigh the cons. Sure, collecting things can be tedious after a while, but it was a really unique experience getting to play as different characters, and the cast of characters is great. They each have their own unique personalities. Donkey Kong is cool, but a little slow. Diddy Kong is hyperactive. Tiny Kong is a tough girl. Lanky is the goofy orangutan, and Chunky is the bulky scaredy cat. When I say each character has its own moveset, I, I really do mean it. It isn't just Banjo and Kazooie divided up into five characters. Donkey Kong is the most middle of the road character with a really large pool of moves, but he for the most part controls as a cross between Mario and Banjo. He's a little slower, but he is a decent all around character. Diddy Kong is much faster and can jump higher and has a pretty good double jump. Tiny Kong is the most mobile of all the characters being able to fly through the air and reach some really hard to reach places, and can occasionally shrink into size too to get into smaller areas. Lanky is pretty slow, but he can walk up steep hills with his hands and can fly through the air with his inflated pants? And Chunky is slow but packs a punch and can grow to be really big and pick up large objects. The level design is actually pretty good, especially since there's a lot of backtracking involved. It doesn't take too long to run a trail through the entire world, which makes collecting things five times over not as tedious as you may think. Usually specific golden bananas are at least marked by other items that must be collected that helps players identify who needs to complete the challenge for the golden banana. Some of the golden bananas are pretty easy to get, more or less just walking over them, but some of them are hidden behind a mini game or a timed section or some sort of puzzle. This actually keeps the game feeling pretty varied. The worlds in this game are absolutely beautiful, and you can really tell that Rare took a similar design to what worked in Banjo-Kazooie and really polished it up for Donkey Kong 64. The textures are a lot tighter and the lighting looks really good, even nearly two decades later. Even some of the worlds in this game were cancelled Banjo-Kazooie worlds, so it's cool that these levels still get to be seen in a game. The soundtrack that fits into these worlds is outstanding and really builds the environment of the worlds. Seriously, Super Mario 64 had good music? Sure, but this game's music is so polished, it really creates this atmosphere that just works so well here. Put your hands together if you want to clap as we take your The boss fights are creative too, and pretty grand in scale, which I like. I love the fact that each character has their own boss fight they have to take on, even though they reuse two boss fights that are harder later on, it's still really well done. Sure, there's some frame rate drops during these boss fights, but it's never game breaking. There's a lot more to this game too, like a multiplayer that was really fun, and some extra challenge mode and specialty characters like a rhino and swordfish, retro games and hub world challenges, but honestly this video is already getting to be significantly longer than the rest of Nintenduary videos, and I have to record more videos after this. Sure, this game can be somewhat repetitive during the second and third worlds in this game, but it opened up so much variety for gameplay and a huge world to explore and discover, and a great cast of characters that demand their own attention. Honestly, this game is pretty underrated, especially since it came out between Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, and really should be appreciated for the masterpiece that this game was. Add this game to your library. But that is it for today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to Rocket Sloth, as every single day we are doing a new review on a Nintendo 64 game. You can check out the other 11 reviews we've done so far. Tomorrow, you can come back, and Luke is taking a look at The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. I know a lot of you guys are really excited for that game's review, so be sure you guys come back tomorrow and check it out, and stay tuned for the rest of Nintenduary.